This week's tip is about something that I get asked frequently, and that is why I do fair isle knitting flat. And there's a couple of reasons why I do it flat instead of in the round. Is uh, my stranding tension is better when I do it flat. No, George, stop chewing on this. Uh, if you notice, this is the wrong side of the piece that I'm currently working on. That the stranding is even and uh, that it looks almost as good as on, on the back as it does on the front. And this is accomplished by the method that I use. Now you can do this, of course, in, in circular knitting, but it's just harder for me. This is the front. Now this piece has not been blocked yet, and so it's not as smooth as it's going to be. But you can see that you can clearly see the designs and that the stitches are of the same size. Now, how I do it flat is, and there are a variety of reasons why people don't like doing this flat, and the main reason, George, gosh, stop eating my yarn. I don't know what it is about stranded knitting that George just loves. Well, there's two colors of yarn. Um, and that is your working knits and pearls, and that you're going to have selvages that you've got to deal with. And over the years, as I've been doing this, I have found that it works best if I keep two selvage stitches, and <coughs> These will be hidden in a seam. Now, I don't mind seaming stranded work. Not hats, of course. I do those in the round and socks. But a sweater, I like to have a side seam. It gives a sweater structure. I don't really I, I pr much prefer a sweater constructed that way. And these two selvage stitches may seem awfully large, but uh, they're no larger than a steak would be. And they match the weight of the fiber. Uh, of the resulting fabric. They're not noticeable uh, when the thing is seamed. And when you're seaming Fair Isle, uh, the other advantage is that there's not a jog at all. You can line it up exactly, and that's another reason why I like working these in the round. Now, I'm doing a real simple little pattern here, and it's just a checkerboard. And notice that my selvage stitches alternate. I have a white and a blue, a blue and a white a white and a blue, and this enables me to maintain the tension of the yarn at the selvages, because otherwise I would have to use kind of an intarsia technique, and this way I don't need to do that. Now to do this row, I'm going to uh, use both hands when I use Feral, and I recommend you do this. It's not that hard to do if you get in the habit of doing it. It takes a bit of practice. and the first few rows on your fair isle it's going to feel pretty awkward but by the time you've completed the piece it's very natural that's because when you are stranding you want to have your dominant color uh, generally held in your left hand this is the color that's going to pop when you look at it and if you want more information about this check out uh, Beth Brown Reinsel's uh, work because she spends a lot of time on this and I don't I just knit and know to do this and you want to make sure that you are going to consistently keep one color on top and one color on the bottom now I generally keep my background color on top and I hold that in my right hand and then my pattern and this one doesn't really matter because it's alternating my pattern yarn in my right hand and this is going to give you uh, the best results now, I'm doing my selvage stitch, and because uh, the stitch was white there, I'm going to do the first stitch in blue, and then I'm going to do the next stitch in white. Okay, so there's my selvage stitches. And am I concerned about these being ugly? Not at all, because these are going to be encased in the seam. I'm not going to see them at all. Now, I've got one, two, so I'm going to be doing blue. And I'm an English knitter. So I had to learn how to be a continental knitter to do this because I don't normally hold my um, yarn in my left hand. So on, on the right side, and it's just a matter of learning the other way of doing it if you want to strand it. Now, as you strand, I tend to stretch and make sure that my strands are nice and loose. You don't want them to be too loose, but you do want them to be 
loose so that the fabric can stretch. If it can't stretch when you put it on, it's going to constrict the pattern and you're going to lose detail. And because that one was blue, this is white. And there we go. So now I'm going to turn, and my pattern is three rows of the color one, two, three, so it's time to change color. And I'm going to set up again. Now my uh, blue yarn I'm going to be holding in my right hand because that's my background color. And you want to be consistent about this and make sure that whichever one you pick to be on top stays on top. That's how you get this nice looking background. Otherwise it's all hodgepodgey and the resulting fabric just does not look as nice. So I'm going to do white there because it was blue and I'm going to do blue here because it was white and now I'm changing the pattern white, white, white and you can see that I am not as comfortable uh, being a continental knitter. But like I said, by the time you get, you know, midway through the garment, you pretty much have got this down. Wait, whoops. You see, I am not as good. I'm always having to reset, which is one reason why I am a thrower. Whatever you like, doesn't matter. And there we go. And the last stitch is always kind of hard. Now again, this does require that you've got two selvage stitches on either side and when this is blocked it'll be nice and flat and notice that my stranding is nice and even and I have consistent pattern there where one is on top and one is on bottom and um, I find that when I purl uh, if you're always having the right side on front when you're working in the round I've noticed that for my work that my strands tend to get shorter and shorter and it pulls in when you're forced to turn your work you see the strands on the outside on the inside so that you can uh, loosen up if you have to.